Hello, hello there, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Art Adventures with me, Lance Cardinal. So nice to see you guys up there, you grade fives and sixes up there at OPK. Always a pleasure to see you and to work with you and to, to see your smiling faces out there, although I can't see you from here. I know you're up there and I'm so proud, as always, to also be a part of the Big Stone Queen Nation. So proud to come from Wabaska as well in Treaty 8 territory. And I know that one day some of you grade fives and sixes will grow up to be an artist as well, which I think is so, so awesome. As always, when we see each other, we always say hello in Cree. And you guys know what to say. So on the count of three, I want to hear you say Tante, which of course is hello in Cree, where we come from. So let's say it together as a team. Are you ready? One, two, three, Tante. <laughs> right on. Good job, you guys. As always, keeping the language going in your school. I know a lot of you have been taking Cree for five or six years, and by now you should be really good at a whole bunch of words. And I'm so proud of you for learning your language and keeping that going because it gives respect and honor to all the elders who are out there teaching. So, so great. And now that we've said hello in Cree, that brings us to today's Cree word of the day. And the Cree word of the day today is the word that kind of tells us what our craft is going to be about, what we're talking about in today's activity. And today's word is dreams. That's right. The word today is dreams. And the way we say dreams in Cree is boatamona. Boatamona. All right, you guys, so I want you to try it out there as well. On the count of three, I want to hear you say it too. Piak Nisa Nensta Boatamona. Right on, good job, you guys, amazing. And dreams is the Cree word of the day, and that is what today's crafting activity is all about. All right, so today's craft is so cool. It's something 3D, it talks about dreams and the night sky and the stars, and that is our dreamscape diorama that's right check this out you guys it is so so cool it is made of paper and it's in three dimensions you can see there are lots of different dimensions to it it's not just one dimension it's three dimensions so we have um clouds and dreams and stars and sun and the moon i mean sorry and the moon so this is what we're going to be working on today is making our own dreamscape diorama so so fun but as always, we have to get our assistant to help us hold it up for us. So where is he? Where are you at? Oh, here you are. Tried to have a day off from work, but he couldn't do it. We're gonna get our guy here, as always, to hold our project for us, just so we can sort of see what we're working on today. And he's always a good assistant. All right, sir, you wanna hold this for us? We're trying to break it. I think he's a little bit jealous of all of our fun stuff. There it is, looking so cool. Oh, <laughs> come on, buddy. You can do this. There we go. Perfect. So he's going to hold that for us the whole time so we can see what we're working towards and sort of like what the final product's going to be. So there it is right there, our beautiful dreamscape diorama. It is so cool. And actually, it's not that hard. Let's get going. The first thing we're going to need to do is put together all of our supplies. All right, so the first thing we're going to need is a cardboard or foam core. So you're gonna need something strong for the back of this, uh, either a piece of foam core, which is the stuff like this that has the foam inside. You can get these at the dollar store, Dollarama always has these, or you can buy them at Michael's or at Walmart. Uh, they're very cool, but you could also use cardboard, like a cereal box or something like this. All you gotta do is make sure it's the same shape as the paper. And speaking of paper, we're gonna need some paper today. Now we're working with eight and a half by 11 sheets of color. And this is the size of cardboard you want. Okay, so if you're cutting out cardboard teachers ahead of time, you want the cardboard to be the same size as your paper. Now the colored paper can be whatever colors you want. As you can see here, I'm using blue, medium blue, and light blue for my diorama. You can also use black as the background where the stars are but I like to use all sorts of blues. It's really cool. Um, so these are 
uh, available anywhere you want to get crafting stuff. You can get these kind of colored paper. They're so cool. But don't forget, you can use construction paper. You can also paint each layer. You could also just use white paper and just create layers and not worry about the color. It's up to you. All right, so that's good there, paper. We're also going to need little pieces of the um, cardboard as spacers. Now you can see here in between all of these different layers, there's space. And I've gone ahead and cut some of these foam core into little squares. You can see there, they're about that thick. We have a whole pile of those. We're gonna put those right over here, and we'll use those a little bit later to space out our, um, our different layers that we're gonna be using. Okay, we're also gonna need some yellow paper and some, oh my goodness. I forgot to grab yellow paper. <laughs> so here we go, we need some yellow paper. You could, oh, that's for our moon, but you could also use white paper for clouds. I'm probably gonna use the light blue for my clouds, as you can see here, but you can also use white for clouds. I feel like the light blue looks a lot better. But what else do we need? Oh, we need a pencil as well. We'll need a pencil or a marker to draw the different layers onto our thing. And we're also gonna need some paint. So as you can see here, I have a blob of yellow paint that's going to be used a little bit later on, but as always, we know that paint needs to have painting supplies. So you need to get your clothes on that you don't mind getting dirty because it will be a little bit messy. You need some water as well. And don't forget you need some paper towels to dab on and clean off that brush. And of course, you're going to need a paintbrush. So we want something small today, something little that's going to be able to do little pointed stars. So that's what this paintbrush is all about, very small. But don't forget, you can also use the back of the paintbrush just like this to dab those stars in. You don't have to use necessarily um, a paintbrush to the front end. Be creative, find different ways to do that. And also, if you want to do the stars a different way, you can also just use paper, uh, little hole, little pieces of tiny little piece of paper. You can glue them on different spots if you want to and make that happen that way. Totally, totally your choice. We're also going to need some scissors today as well as some glue. Now, I'm using two kinds of glue today. As I always do, I'm using glue gun just for speed for today's project, but also because it'll hold these different layers together. You're also gonna need glue stick though to put that first layer on. Oh my goodness, I think we have almost everything we need. Do we set everything? Yeah, I think we're good to go. Let's start the project. Okay, first step is the back. So, we take our cardboard or foam core, whatever we decide to use, and we're gonna start with that. Put that down. Now decide for yourself what you want to have as the first layer of color. I am going to be using blue because I think that blue looks nice as a backdrop. But like I said before, you can also use black. So we take our glue stick, and this is why glue stick works very well for this project, and we smear it everywhere. Now glue stick is cool because it works fast. It does every single part of this backdrop and you can, you know, you don't have to worry about it gooping too much. If you use white glue, it's going to get all weird and goopy. You don't want that. You want it to be nice and stuck. Okay. And we get our piece of blue paper or black, whatever you decide for your backdrop. And we try to match up the edges and slide it on. Now try to get every single part of this paper attached to the, the cardboard so it's nice and secure. It's really, really important. Make sure and cover up our glue. All right, so now we have our backdrop color, which is the blue. Now you can see here, um, the foam uh, will hold this part steady, so everything we put on top of that will hold securely as well. All right, now that that's done, we set it aside. Put that over here. Our next step is to draw the three layers of the dreamscape. So I have three different colors here I'm gonna be using the back color, the middle color, and the front color. Now, as you can see here, the front hole is the biggest, and the middle hole gets a little bit smaller, and the back hole is the smallest. So the best way to do that, is start with the front. So we take our pencil, and we start with the front piece. It's gonna go in the very front right here, and we start to draw. Now, you can either draw cloud look, or you can draw wavy look like I did. I'm gonna do wavy again since that seems to be a bit of an easier process. So don't worry about it too much, just go around, leaving not too much room on the edges here. You want it to be dreamlike and mystical and magical. And there we go. Oop, I'm gonna fix that one a little bit. 
And there we have the line I want. I'm going to cut that out. You want to be as careful as you can. I'm using um, a thick paper called cardstock. Now this stuff is available as well at any craft store. I find it easier to work with, but you can also use construction paper. Or if you really want to, you could also glue every layer onto cardboard to make it stiffer. The stiffer the paper, the better the effect is going to be at the end. Now don't sweat too much about how it looks with the pencil and everything like that. We're going to use the opposite side. Once we start working, we're going to flip it over, okay? So don't worry about that. Just keep that for later, all right? Now, as you can see, the next layer is now showing, okay? So what we want to do now is draw the next layer in, but smaller than the first layer, okay? So let's try that now. So don't, again, don't sweat it, don't overthink it too much. There we go, now we can see all that will show in the next layer, okay? So it's important to know that. Put that aside and cut that layer out. Now, if you're gonna use the blue, light blue for clouds, don't forget to save this light blue for the clouds, the center part of this one. Now you wanna make sure and cut this all in one piece if you can. If you end up tearing the outer edge at all, just tape it up. Don't worry about it too much or start over with a new piece, it's up to you. Whatever is best for you and what you're doing. All right, there we go. Save that for later. And now we have our second layer. As you can see there, whoops. Now we have two layers. You can see that the colors work, that's for sure. Now one more layer left to do in there, okay? And again, we take our pencil and we draw in the layer. There we go. Set those aside and cut this out. Now don't worry too much about following the lines when you're cutting it. it. You know, the more wavy, the better, and the more abstract, the better. Okay, it's gonna look much better that way. All right, so we try to put this in place and there we go, three layers. Now it should look something like this. If it's overlapping and things like that, like this and like that and the other, don't worry, it's gonna look so cool. It should look um, random and natural and not too made, okay? All right, so now we have all three layers ready to go and the next step is we're gonna glue them onto our um, backdrop, okay? So take all three layers, put them aside, get our base back, okay? This is our base level, it's our base layer. Now, um, if you haven't already done so, now would be a good time to cut up all your little pieces. We're gonna need them all ready to go standing by. Um, I'm gonna put them all right here beside me. It's good to pre-cut them so you can work quickly. Um, if you haven't done that, you guys can pause the video, cut out your little pieces. You should have a lot. Uh, you're gonna need as many as you can to help make each layer work, okay? It's gonna take some finessing, but you guys got this. Your grade fives and sixes, your bigger kids, this is gonna be easy for you. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is glue on everything in order. I'm going to flip all this over and have, so this was like this before, but the pencil's showing. I'm gonna flip it over and rearrange it so the pencil is not showing and do it like that and like that. There we go. Our three layers, just like that. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is the back layer, which goes right here. That's the closest one to the back. So that's the first one we're gonna put on. So we take this, the wrong side and we glue spacers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You wanna do all the edges to start because then at least you know that those parts of the paper are gonna be secured. Spaces, just like that. 
easy as pie. Now, because there's so much room between the middle and the outside, we're gonna add some more spaces on the inner edge. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's do seven. This is why I said to make sure you have lots of pieces because you know, eventually you may run out of pieces. You're gonna have to cut them as you go and it'll just stop the process. It's best to have them all pre-cut. So go as close as you can to the edge, but not that close because, you know, if you don't, if you get too close, you're gonna see it from the front. See, right now we can't see any of it except for all those glue strings. Don't mind my glue strings. They're everywhere all the time. Um, there we go. So those are ready to go. You don't see any black squares. Now we're gonna glue it onto this first layer. So. Now we put glue on all of these pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now you can use glue gun, glue stick, white glue, dark glue, red glue, glitter glue. I don't care what kind of glue you got, just glue it on. So we take the first piece, now we have all the glue on the pieces and we flip it over and we gently place it and we press gently all the different spots that we have glue, okay? Ooh, a little bit off on the side. <laughs> I kind of got off a little bit on that side. Doesn't matter, we can fix it in the next layer. But look, there we go, layer one is done. You can see it's a little bit, looks like a fishing pond. <laughs> so first layer is finished. Next step is second layer. So you want to go to the layer that's going to come next. So we can see here, the middle layer is next. So we flip it over and we add our pieces on the back side. Ow, <laughs> I glued my finger right to the paper. Good thing it's not that hot today. Now I know this is a bit tedious, but uh, it's worth it in the end because the final result is so awesome. And these kind of pictures, man, you can do whatever you want. You can make it into a superhero image or you could use it like, you know, there's lots of different things you can do with this. So what we're gonna do now is find spots where you think it would probably gonna need some support, like the inner, areas here, 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 rounded area there will need some support. But you can also, once you put it on, you can see, if you touch it, you can see where it needs more support. There we go. All ready to go. Let's put the glue on those and we'll put it on our second layer. All right, so that glue is all there. Let's bring our next layer in. And we flip it over and make sure we're in the right place. Looks like it, and we gently put it down. Because once it's in place, it's in place. And we push gently on the spots that have the support. You can see on the side, some of the support is showing. You won't notice that from the front. Ooh, all my glue strings are everywhere. Okay, second layer is in, check it out. Looks so good. So that is perfect. Now one more layer left, which is the top layer, and then we can add the clouds and the moon and the stars. So make sure we have our top layer in place. Looks like it's gonna be perfect. Set it aside, flip over to the back, and let's add some pieces. Now, I won't have to put as many pieces on this one because guess what? It's the last layer. So you don't need to do a twice as deep. Ooh, that one's gonna be hard. I'll have to make some new pieces for that part. And we just add some layers, spacers, I mean. It's always good to get the corners so that it's, um, at least the edges are secured. Now I'm gonna have to make a custom piece for that little skinny part right there. No problem at all, I can easily do that. Okay, I'm gonna cut a small piece like this, just enough to make a little spacer there. And there we go. Okay, last spacer is done. And now we gotta add glue to those pieces right there so we can attach it to the front. All right, here we go. Good to go, bring this piece back here. 
flip it over and I think we are good to gently place it on. Ooh, very good. Oh my goodness. It looks so good, you guys. I can't wait to show it to you. Check it out. Isn't that so cool? So there we have all sorts of different layers going in. Almost looks like a, a skating rink. But you know what? You don't have to use these little foam spacers. You can use cardboard. You can use um, anything you can find that is thick and you can make a spacer with. Just do that. It's up to you. There's no rules. Like I always say, this is just art. There's no rules. Play it by ear. Do your best. Okay, now we can put this aside. It's time for us to work on the clouds. So I'm gonna use light blue for my clouds because I feel like it's just a better color to use. I didn't use uh, the light blue, uh, for a dark blue for my clouds there. I'm gonna use light blue this time. Now, don't worry too much about the clouds. You can draw them if you want. I like to draw cut freehand for clouds uh, because I feel like they're more natural that way. So I just start cutting like this. Sometimes it's good to make a shape like I just did here a shape of what you kind of want and then go from there and just make it up as you go along. Check it out. Cloud number one. Done. Sun. Now we do some more. This one's going to be a smaller cloud, obviously a little bit different shape. I think I'm going to do five clouds this time. Two. Now your clouds can be whatever shape you want. You don't have to even put clouds in if you don't want to. You can put in whatever you want. Rocket ships, spaceships, lightning bolts, I, you know, whatever you're doing. I don't care. It's your art. Whatever you're doing is going to be correct and I'm going to love it, I'm sure. Now this cloud's a little bit funny shape, but we're going to make it work. Looks like I only have enough for um, four clouds. No big deal. I'll only do four clouds today. Okay, there we go. So again, I didn't think too hard about these clouds. You have four clouds here, and of course that's one, two, three, four. But let's try and count them in Cree. As always, it's a good chance to practice our Cree. Let's do it right now. Are you ready? Here we go. Piak, Nisa, Nensta, Niwa. Yes, four in Cree. Good job, students. Love that so much. You know, Cree and art, they go hand in hand. Um, okay, so great. So now the next step is putting our clouds into our scene. Now this part here, it's going to be up to you what you want to do, how you want to put the clouds in, where you want it to go. Um, I liked uh, the idea here, you can see some of my clouds were on the outside of the picture, sort of like that. And some of them are on the inside of the picture, so it really depends on what you want to do. I mean these clouds are a little bit bright, so I feel like I should put them, I'm going to start gluing and make it happen. So I'm going to put glue on one side of this, find a spot I like and place the cloud in on one of the layers like with that okay this cloud going in next one edge like this i'm going to put this cloud actually right i'm going to put it right here okay now you can see with this cloud there's lots of space i think we should add some spacers there so take some spacers glue like three together and put it underneath the cloud to secure it. Just like that. And you can see there, now it's secure. It won't fall off and it won't bend and it looks like it's totally 3D. Now two more clouds to put in. I think what I'll do is kind of put some clouds over that cloud. It looks like they're kind of overlapping. Like that. Cool, right? I have one more cloud to do. And I think I'm going to put my moon there. So I think maybe I'll put some clouds. Where should I put clouds? Down here? Maybe down here? Maybe there. That looks good. There, perfect. That cloud as well is a little bit floppy. So is that one? Should we put some spacers? Why not? Again, take some spacers, glue them together, 
and put them in place. And then glue the top on. And a few more spacers. One, two, three, and glue it in place for the bottom. Okay. And we glue that piece on to that spacer. Now you don't have to put the spacers in, the paper will stay, but I just feel like it helps hold it all in place, you know what I mean? So someone touches it, it's not gonna get squished or wrecked. There we go, now we have all the clouds and the trim done and the dreamscape is finished. The next step is a moon, okay? So we're gonna put this aside for now and get our yellow paper. And again, you don't have to draw the moon, you don't have to make the moon, you don't have to, just cut it. Cut a piece of square out. You know, this big, whatever big you want, and start making a moon. Don't think too much sometimes. Sometimes it's better just to try. Use your scissors to create the idea. Not always a pencil or your mind. Start cutting. Look, a moon. Easy as pie. So we get our picture here, and we're going to add the moon wherever we think is necessary. Now, I'm not sure where we think the moon would go. Hmm, maybe, the, maybe this picture goes actually the other way. Maybe it goes this way, and maybe the moon is here. Maybe it's behind. Maybe it goes there. I'm not sure, let me think. Maybe right, I love the idea of it being behind the cloud a little bit. Maybe back here. It's always fun to make these decisions because, there, how about that? Behind a cloud, love it. Let's do that. Look at that! The moon is behind one cloud and in front of another. That makes it look so 3D. I just love it. Very good, you guys. Perfect. So we are getting so close to being done. The last step is to add the stars. This is where we're going to need our paint set, paint brushes and things like that. So get our paint, paint, paint brushes ready and our water. Okay, now like I said before, you don't have to use a paintbrush for this. You don't have to even use paint for this. You could use uh, paper or whatever you have and, and you don't have to even use a brush. You can just use the back of your brush with a pencil and just go in there with the paint. I'm gonna use a paintbrush because I'm just that way. Okay, let's get our paint. We're gonna make little dots. Now, the harder you press, the bigger the dots will be. And don't worry too much about it. Just put them here and there and everywhere. We're just making little stars. See, we go. Adding as we go. And there we go, little stars. So we rinse out our brush as always. Never leave that paint in there because it will dry out. Perfect, put that aside. And now take a look everyone, I am done. My beautiful dreamscape diorama, so cool. Something you can put on your wall in your room or you can put it in your locker or in school on the wall and show everyone your work or give it as a gift. But whatever the case, so, so great. And I hope yours worked out well. And if it didn't, keep trying, do it again. And I hope to see you all again next week, as always. So thanks so much, K5s and 6s, a great 5s and 6s. We'll see you next time. May the Creator watch over you as long as the sun shines, the grass grows, and the river flows. See you later, guys. But now we got two. Two dreamscapes, totally different.